Hello, this is Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. Today I have got you a very important lesson and one that absolutely confuses the daylights out of everyone. So if you say gerunds, then people get so frightened and they get frightened of grammar is almost synonymous with fright of gerunds. It's that bad. And actually it's very very simple. I really cannot understand why there is so much fear. So today I'm going to look at gerunds, participles and infinitives. I think one of our big problems is that we don't cluster things together. So if you have certain uh, categories that go together, you need to teach them together. If you teach them in separate years, obviously you will not remember what you learned last year or the year before last. And then those connections or those links are not made. And then you suffer from immense confusion and naturally fear. So these are called verbals, okay? Or they are called non-verbs. I like to call them imposters. Now why imposter? Who's an imposter? An imposter is someone who pretends to be someone else. So if a man comes to your door and he's dressed as a policeman but he's actually a thief and you let him in and then he says I have to investigate your house or search your house and he robs you then you realize later that he was an imposter. So an imposter is someone in disguise. These verbals are imposters. Why are we calling them imposters? Because they all look like verbs. They look like verbs. So the minute you see them, you call them a verb. Okay? But they are not verbs. They are something else. Now if they are not verbs, what can they be? They have to either be nouns or they have to be adjectives. Correct? So this is the first thing to remember. The verbals are not verbs they are either nouns or adjectives so that's the first one now what are these gerunds participles and infinitives it's a set of three three imposters who are pretending to be verbs and they are gerunds participles and infinitives and how are they made so if i write their dancing it's an ing word and therefore that's a gerund. How is a gerund identified? It's an ing word. This ending will always be there in a gerund. Participle, again dancing. So see the confusion. This can also be dancing. So you're saying, how can it be? What's the difference? Etc. Etc. Okay, we'll just hold it. And here it will be two dance. This is easy. See, two plus verb. Now these X's are put for you there. What, does those, what, what do those X's mean? Those X's mean that there is no helping verb. So it is not is dancing, was dancing, has been dancing, had been dancing, nothing. Just dancing. So when you see this word dancing coming alone without any helper, no auxiliary, no helping verb, you know that it is either a gerund or a participle this is one thing to remember this was very easy two dance two plus verb that's there is no confusion there so the minute you see to dance to sing to jump etc in a sentence you must not jump and mark it as a verb you must not say oh there's dance there you know i can see the dancing it's an action word don't do it look at the thing in front if it's a two there then it is most likely to be an infinitive which is not a verb now let's come to these two now gerunds are nouns okay and these are adjectives that's the difference although it's the same word gerunds are nouns and participles are adjectives when are they adjectives? When they come on their own. So if I say is dancing, it's a verb. 
if i say that is what when i say it's a verb what do i mean the verb is made up of the auxiliary and d a n c i n g the i n g word there is also called a participle so a participle makes verbs but it will make a verb only if there is a helper if there is no helper and it is coming on its own then it remains a participle it is not called a verb because it is not making any tenses there is nothing in front of it so this is one of those things for you to remember okay if this much is clear we'll proceed now when you say when i say dancing is a noun it must have all the qualities of a noun when i say all the qualities of a noun what do i mean the work that it does in the sentence must be that of a noun see words on their own have absolutely no strength all their power comes from the work that they do the function that they have in a sentence so here when you say swimming is a good exercise can you see there it's got nothing in front of it no helper so i automatically know this is either a gerund or a participle now i have to find out whether it's a noun or whether it's an adjective so swimming is a good exercise now what can it be is it a noun or is it an adjective if it is an adjective what have we said we have always said that if it's an adjective it must have a noun after it do you remember so i can't just say pretty cute cute what isn't it so now when you say swimming is a good exercise you will find that here this cannot be an adjective because it doesn't have a noun after it isn't it so therefore it must be a noun now let's see if the all the business of the noun suits it now when you say swimming is it the name of an action yes swimming is the name of an action can i say there the swimming the swimming helped him to get better can i say that yes the swimming therefore the article i can put in front of a noun can i say my swimming is improving day by day my swimming possessive adjective you can only put it in front of a noun and therefore that fits beautifully can i say this swimming is really boring yes so i can put a demonstrative adjective in front of it and if i say let us go for swimming for preposition what comes after a preposition a noun so you will find all the noun rules fit the swimming let us take one more example if i cancel that swimming and if i say golf is a good exercise what is golf will you call golf a verb will you call it an adjective no you'll call it a noun won't you so therefore you can only change a noun with another noun golden rule you cannot change it any way which way you like you have to change a noun with another noun so here i can change swimming with golf so now i am 100% sure that it's a noun it's an ing word it does not have any helper in front of it it's a gerund it's that simple okay now let's go to now i can also change this with i love to swim okay no not this one but if i say i love to swim here to swim is an infinitive to plus swim i can say i love chess can't i so therefore is chess a verb no so therefore again this here infinitive is a noun right i can also change this with i love swimming i can say that also there's no issues so because they are both nouns i can change them the infinitive is a noun and the gerund is a noun but they are not always interchangeable so i can say i want to swim i can't say i um, i want swimming is kind of strange there are certain verbs that will not allow you to change them and there are certain verbs that will allow you to change them okay now swimming ducks are fun to watch what is happening here can you see this ducks noun and what is in front of it swimming so what is swimming 
it's an adjective because it's got what kind of ducks swimming ducks I can cut this and I can say pretty ducks I can put an ordinary adjective it will work black ducks several ducks um, smooth ducks cute ducks I can put any adjective it will work because I can only change an adjective with another adjective okay so therefore swimming here is an adjective watching ducks is fun if I say watching ducks is fun is watching uh, the name of an activity or is it describing the ducks the ducks cannot be described as watching ducks are we saying that the ducks are sitting and watching no so therefore this is clearly not an adjective because there is no such thing as watching ducks they can be swimming ducks they can be maybe quacking ducks but they can't be watching ducks ducks are not sitting and watching anyone and therefore watching ducks for whom for me for me watching ducks is a lot of fun because they are cute they waddle around and it makes me feel at uh, peace so therefore watching ducks is fun here it is a noun and when it's an ing word without anything in front of it this noun is called a gerund so gerund is nothing but a special name that is given to nouns ending in ing that's all and participles are special names given to adjectives ending in ing what you need to remember is both these ing words should not have any helpers to help it they should be standing alone okay so once you understand that you have understood your gerunds participles infinitives let's look at some um, sentences leaping dolphins are a great sight to behold but fishing is what I like okay that's a sentence now very often if you are uh, I have a grammar series called language with ease it goes from 1 grade 1 to grade 7 and as early as grade 2 children pick out that certain words are not verbs okay so in this sentence if you are going to look at the sentence the child will immediately pick up leaping not a verb there is nothing in front of it they will pick up to behold behold means what see to see so to behold because they will say to plus the verb not a verb and they will pick out fishing because there is nothing no helper in front of fishing so the first thing to do is to pick out those words that are not verbs now this is not only meant for small children this is meant for the older children uh, the large examination going group of young adults who are doing simple compound complex transformations okay the first thing to do in a simple compound complex transformation is to pick out the verbs in a sentence so that you know how many clauses there are isn't it and if you make the mistake of picking out gerunds participles and infinitives as verbs then you will never be able to transform that sentence instead of four verbs you will count eight verbs in those big sentences and you will fail so therefore this is a very very important lesson to pick out verbs and to pick out those that are not verbs the imposters the verbals the non verbs we must pick out so what is leaping dolphins here I can see a noun there so if there's a noun behind it it's an adjective so I can say singing birds dancing girls fighting boys all are adjectives because they're telling you more about the girls and the boys and the birds and therefore leaping dolphins is an adjective are a great sight to behold to see so to see obviously is not a verb it's a noun okay but fishing fishing is the name of an activity now isn't it now if I if you think that that's a participle look out for is there a noun uh, is there a noun after it does it say fishing boat fishing net nothing so therefore fishing there is the name of an activity 
and it's a noun or it's called a gerund. So that's how we've cracked that first bit, the first sentence. The verbs, we have clearly understood that. Let's look at this one. Now you've got an ing here. But can you see this guy sitting here? R. What is R? R is a helping verb. So very clearly, R planning there is a verb. So don't just look at ing and say, oh, it's not a verb. Don't do the opposite of what you were doing before. Remember, there is an R there and therefore R planning is a continuous tense, present continuous tense. We are planning to visit. See, to visit is not a verb. The thundering waterfalls. Can you see waterfalls? What's waterfalls? It's a noun. So what is thundering? It's an adjective. Participle, verb, infinitive and thundering waterfalls and then go boating. See again boating is sitting there without anything so it's either a gerund or a participle. Does it have anything after it? Boating spree, boating uh, excursion, nothing. Boating adventure, nothing after it, just boating and therefore it will be a gerund. It's very, very, very simple. On finding no one to play with, the child began crying and his caring mother got him an ice cream. On finding, can you see this preposition? What is the object of a preposition? Always a noun. So therefore I can straight away say this is a gerund. Right? On finding no one to play. To play, infinitive. With. The child began crying. Now see, began is the verb there. But began is not a helping verb, is it? Began is not is, are, has been, will have been. It's not that. Began is the verb here. What is crying there? Is the action, the act of crying and therefore it's a gerund. And his caring mother, mother, noun and therefore caring is an adjective. So this is a participle. A cracking sound broke the singing in the room. Cracking, sound, noun and therefore participle. See it's so easy. Broke the singing. See the, what is the rule for? Articles can only be put in front of nouns and therefore this is a gerund. Why is it a gerund? Because it's an ing word in the room. Trolling on the internet, trolling on the internet, trolling ing word. So it's either a gerund or a participle. Was Mohan's fascinating obsession trolling is there some is there a noun after it no so what is trolling it's the name of an activity not a, a nasty little activity isn't it it's very modern it's only now because of the internet and social media we have this trolling trolling on the internet was mohan's fascinating obsession can you see obsession obsession means you want to do it all the time so early morning he gets up and starts trolling Till late in the night, he is trolling somebody. Means he is harassing them by writing all kinds of things and getting them to respond and wasting a huge amount of time, both his and the person's. So, obsession. He can't get over it. He wants to troll all the time. Fascinating, therefore, is an adjective. And therefore, it's a participle. Till he had... So, he, he it was an obs obsession. Till he had to pay... Infinitive, isn't it? Infinitive. A high price for it. Probably the investigating officers from the cyber crime department came and arrested him and made him go to the police station. He had to pay a high price for trolling so that he would stop and he would stop harassing people. Now, if I had written trolling on the internet, Mohan was caught. 
Suppose I change it. Trolling on the internet, Mohan was caught. Now this is something I want you to pay attention to. Here what is happening? Okay, this is a very tricky one. Trolling on the internet, Mohan was caught. This one, when you get it first here, is a participle. Now, how is it an adjective? Because it's a phrase, it's a participle phrase. But you can take Mohan there and say, Mohan who was trolling was caught. Can't you? What is this phrase doing? This is describing... Mohan. This is telling you something mo more about Mohan. Mohan who was trolling on the internet was caught. So remember this who was. So whenever you look at participles, the trick is who was. Just add who was and make it into an adjectival clause. Can you do it is the question. Now this trolling can come here. Mohan who was trolling on the internet was caught. I can put it in the middle also. Mohan was caught trolling on the internet. I can put it anywhere. But it essentially remains an adjectival phrase telling you something more about Mohan. Suppose I say running recklessly, the boy fell into the ditch. Running recklessly. What do I mean? The boy who was running recklessly fell into the ditch. So for an adjective, you must always be able to connect it with a noun. So it doesn't always have to be a noun immediately after it. It can also be a big phrase. It can be two words. And but after that, you will get a noun. You should be able to connect it, link it to that noun. If there is no noun link, you can be sure that it will be a noun. It will not be an adjective. An adjective must get linked to a noun. Adjectives will never float in the air without nouns. So this is the lesson on, I hope you've understood it. Now you need to watch this video several times. You know, there are people who watch it once and say, oh, I've, I've got it. You never get grammar like that. One of what I do with language with ease, which is my series, is I get children to do it on a daily basis for 10 minutes every day. So the teacher doesn't really need to, um, uh, you know, thoroughly get it into them, give them definitions, give them exercises and then forget about it. So you do gerund for about one week and then you never look at gerund again. You will forget gerund. And that's how all of us have forgotten the gerund. Not because we didn't do it but because you did it fleetingly. When you do it every day, you don't have to do it so thoroughly. You can just touch and go. I always tell teachers it's like a feather duster. You know, if you have a feather duster and you're cleaning your house, what do you do? You take the duster and rub the surface? No, you just touch it. No? And it, that's all, you don't worry about it. But every day if you touch it, it'll, the surface will always remain clean. But if you try to dust it after 10 minutes, uh, after 10 days, then there's so much dust on it that the duster will not work. So if you want an easy life, you need to do it every day and touch it on a daily basis. And do it with sentences where you can do a lot of things. So I've done a video on this, which I will upload as soon as possible. But do remember to pause here, try and do this yourself first. Okay, don't see the whole thing. Stop it there after I finish that. Pause and see whether you can do it. And then start the video and look at it again. Watch the video several times and if you have any doubts, then put it in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. Remember that there is a bell icon that you must use so that you get my notifications when my videos are put up. And yes, in the description box, there is a link which will take you to the website and you can order the books there. If you work through it 10 minutes a day, you will be amazing in grammar. Start from the bottom, go very slowly, feather duster, don't stress, don't strain, don't even try to remember anything. You just do it every day and it will become part of your memory forever. So thank you very much for listening. 
keep smiling till we meet again